The following program is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. This I've got to see. It's worth watching, so stay tuned. Good to see you. Happy Friday, April 9th, 2021. Leandro, Jason, Sierra, Patrick, Richard, Jordan, JT, Kent. You guys are fantastic. Love to see you. This is Miss Cynthia Cruz, the only woman allowed on this show and on this channel for her. For her. <laughs> Never done that one before. For her professional perspective. Thank it's you. Fro it's Freudian Slip <laughs> Friday. Thank you so much. Freudian Slip Friday. <laughs> I might have to try a different way of saying that now. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Thank you. You're, that was cute. I like that. That was really awesome. If I'm going to get that reaction, I'll just do that every time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're here because you want to know the skills of being amazing in relationship and being phenomenal in your own life. You want that daily renewal of belief in yourself. Uh, what other skills can I add on? Hey, can I breathe into my belly for two minutes today? Do a two-minute guided meditation. These are things that we teach every single day here for you know for free in our Facebook group, in our small uh, coaching groups, and in our one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. And we like to start with some comedy and some fun. That's part of why you're here is the edutainment, right? The infotainment. <laughs> Steve Forsman says infotainment's a good idea. I'm like, yeah. We've been now doing this infotainment for a year, Cynthia. Congratulations. <laughs> How does that feel? So first Friday after the year mark. Oh, that feels amazing. It feels so incredible. And I think anytime there's any type of time stamping in our lives, it can be a moment to be like, oh my gosh, a year's passed. And then a moment to be like, oh my God, a year's passed. And to look at. That was deep. <laughs> all that has changed uh, <laughs> over the course of time because it's very easy if we're especially in a tough spot to think that nothing ever gets better uh, but to really mark back in time and and yeah. be great have gratitude for the little things if not the huge enormous things you never expected to have happen. that's right be grateful for the huge <laughs> enormous things in your life Well, happy Friday. Let's take a peek at Miss Cynthia's sexcapade spot that she does about the last 10 minutes of the show. Oh, Cynthia's sexcapade spot. When when to push her tush? When <laughs> She's standing in the moonlight. It's double moon. She's mooning and there's the moonlight. That, so was, that was very good. That was, oh, you like that? I, I just I pulled that out. Of your, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was awesome. Oh, well, why, thank you. Why, thank you. <laughs> when to push her tush. We're going to find out when to push her tush today. Good to see you, gentlemen. Leandro here, Bernard here, Patrick Richard, Jordan Kent, Randy, Dave, Mr. Bradbury. Happy Friday, Mr. Bradbury. How many days left, man? What's the countdown right now? Five work days. Five work days? Yes. T today, tomorrow, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, my God. Hot dog! Congratulations, Jason. Jason is quitting his day job. Say that five times fast. Quitting his day job in five days. Oh my gosh! Congratulations, man. We gotta. We have to throw a party or something. Are you like going out? Are you gonna celebrate? Are you gonna have? Uh, are you gonna? <laughs> are you gonna throw streamers around your place? I will probably dance naked for a while. Yeah, that's that's, that's about it. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. That's where I was going with all that. That was just foreplay for naked dancing. That was good. <laughs> well, fantastic. Oh, my gosh. All right, let's go ahead and jump into a uh, question from the forum. This one's a little bit longer. Actually, no, I don't want to skip our staircase of courage question today. Then we're going to jump into a question from the forum. Uh, it's a little bit longer. It's something to unfold here today on a Friday. I think it's going to be perfect for us. But before that, as long as you aren't dancing naked in the moonlight like Jason's going to be five days from now, I want you to punch the answer into this chat. Okay, you're here because you want to step forward into your life, into the world. A part of this is to uh, 
punch into the chat to support each other. Punch, you know, you should be talking with other guys in the chat as well. If you haven't uh, met and connected with men from all around the world, I've been to, I'd have to count the number of countries. Went to Sweden. Uh, we're planning on going to the UK. Been all around uh, Europe as far as travels myself. And I hope that you can get out when the world opens up again as well and meet guys all around the country, all around the world, like Cynthia and I do. We plan on going to Columbus, Ohio here in a couple of weeks. And uh, then I'm going out to Idaho and we were in Savannah, Georgia and Boston and we've been all around the place. So what, that's one thing I can celebrate right now is our plans, our travel. So the question is, what can you celebrate right now in your world? Go ahead and punch that into the chat. Are you excited to go to Columbus? Yeah, I am. Especially talking to a couple of the guys that we're just going to see there yesterday. That was I'm really looking forward to meeting them in person. Yeah. So then I'm going to uh, meet a couple of couples. We work with couples once in a while out in Columbus. And then guys, by the way, if you're in flying distance or driving distance, if you're near Columbus and you haven't heard this, uh, it's a guys night on May 1st, Saturday, May 1st, coming up here, 2021. Go out there with Dennis, Dennis Collins. It's going to be about eight to 10 of us. Okay, here's a question from the forum. I read another post on vowing no sex pressure on his wife. Good move. So taking sex off the table with his wife. Good move, this guy says. He's lucky that his wife considers it, considers it and has a solid shot, it seems, at turning things himself. My wife says she does not want sex anymore period, ever, shop closed. And this has been going on for months and years, up to the point that rather than the home separation we discussed, she's offered separate rooms, done, and for me to go out and do what I need to do. Go out and do what you need to do sexually. We can stay together in a platonic relationship. Where is the line drawn? Where's my nuts, my non-negotiable, unalterable term? when I take stock of that reality beyond my control and indeed imagine another kind of co-parenting partnership, staying straight in my boots, accepting she can't be all and seeking the intimacy I also need without breaking our family. How can I do all those things? In understanding, which I have, whilst remaining attentive, presence, leading where and when relevant, funnily, I can sense that my wife has now gone from ice to cold water just a little after a family holiday. And now I'm a little off, wondering how open I need to be about my outside time with a slight intuition that she does not want me to leave and to seek pleasure elsewhere. Okay, this sounds familiar. So this is this is the, uh, I never wanna have sex with you again, so go out and just do it, but does she really mean that? Am I really gonna go out and find another woman to you know, connect with sexually and still try to keep my family together? What happens if I actually do what she just said she wants me to go do and find sex somewhere else? He says, I'm done with hope and I'm facing the music, yet despite our agreements, I'm torn between thinking this would ruin very, very thin chances of a turnaround with his wife and, on the contrary, whether my pursuing what we agreed would act as a draw. Thoughts, anyone? Oh, like, would that actually draw her back? All right, what would you do here? What do you, where do you think this man is emotionally? What do you think he wants? And uh, go ahead and jump in. I'm, I'm gonna shut up for 20 seconds and unmute yourself. Come on in. Where do you think this guy is and, and uh, what do you think he wants next here? Looks like- well, First good. off, I mean, like I said, he, he seems very aware about the entire situation and give him props. The fact that, you know, he's questioning what his nuts are at. That's a huge step. And the fact that she's controlling the, you know, the bedroom situation, the offering him to go do what he wants to do situation. Like that just sounds like a bunch of shit tests compiled on onto each other. And so, you know, doing that is up to him if that's what he wants to do, but finding his values and what he wants out of the entire situation is, is going to guide him in the right direction. Yeah. That's the, that's what he wants next, right? That's the answer in that question of what he wants next and, and where he is. I mean, a piece of this guys is to know where you are on the map, right? And that's what Kent's saying too, that next is more work identifying what your nut is in this situation. What if she never changes? What about, you know, what are you going to do in the meantime in this chapter of what's going on? What's your daily focus? Yeah. Patrick, thanks for raising your hand. Come on in. In some ways, he needs to determine the truth and 
she wants him to go elsewhere, I'd be flirting with other people in front of her and just see what her reaction is. That was actually the last thing that he said is, uh, should he go do what she said? And maybe that would act as a draw for her. Is that kind of what you're saying, Patrick? No, I'm saying he doesn't go on. <laughs> on his, Can't you understand the exit? <laughs> um, oh, what I'm saying is to determine the truth, he flirts consciously and is relaxed with other women in front of her. Uh, and, why? And, because and, that's what he believes in? That's what he wants? Or to try to see what well, she'll do? It's to try to see what her what her truth is. If she reacts negatively to that, that's going to tell you something. He's not hiding it. He's going, okay. And he's just being flirty and, and relaxed and casual and happy in himself and, and, and watching. If he goes in isolation and does it, that's a different matter. If, if he goes in isolation and does it without like not, not around her, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Gotcha. Well, yeah. So how much would you think he's doing this to test her and how much is he just doing it for himself? It's a loaded question. Well, shit tests go both ways. Sure. Yeah. Patrick's a tough customer. That's like, he's not going to mess around. He's going to put it back into her. I, I think that's a great idea if he can do so in a grounded, calm way, right? The, the danger is that guys are doing things to see if they can get a response from her, right? There's that covert expectation of, oh, if I do this and I play this game, then I'll reattract her. And the only thing that I've seen work with a woman who's completely turned off is you need to be ready, prepared, and practicing, to your point, Patrick, uh, being with other women, talking with other women. That's your point. For her to have the potential of being reattracted, you have to have let her go. Basically, that's what we see. And I think that's what you're saying is practice those skills and just see what happens. Exactly. You're a good teacher, Jeff. <laughs> right on, Patrick. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for jumping in. Cynthia, what do you see between the lines here uh, from her? I mean, is there anything more that you'd want to add on to this? Is she serious about it? Well, thank you for asking. I uh, I don't ever think a woman is, she may be seriously saying like, fine, go be with someone else, go get your needs met somewhere else. But there is never in her in a like evolutionary feminine place does she truly honestly mean that that's okay with her. Like in her core, she may be posturing like a man and in masculine energy and like being very logical, but in her core, she is not. And uh, that is an expression of extreme hurt and extreme anger and not feeling hope in the relationship. Um, and to, to go ahead and like go be with someone else thinking like logically she's giving her blessing uh, feels like a quagmire of emotions and yeah. arguments to walk back into. Um, I like, like what Patrick is saying in terms of like, okay, you know, you know, I can, you know, press up against you and see where you, you are coming from, from as well. And it's not too men kind of shit testing each other. Like a woman's coming from a, a very different emotionally centered place when she puts down these challenges and these gauntlets and these uh, walls. Yeah, certainly that, that makes me think of, so we're highlighting the warrior energy, the Jungian archetype this week and next week. And I curated a few more paragraphs, about two minutes worth from the book about being in that pinnacle masculine energy and a part of the warrior energy, what Cynthia, what you were just talking about, um, part of the warrior energy we've been discussing this week is when you're in warrior that she may not feel you and knowing your direction, knowing which way you're turning your shoulders and then executing on that, getting up, doing your morning routine, joining us here in the show, connecting with other men around the world like you are. Uh, literally meeting in person. A couple of my clients, one from Savannah, Georgia that I've known for two, three months and another one in Puerto Rico I've known for about two years just met. He went there to Puerto Rico on a business trip and they were on live. They're both in one of our small group coachings and they were on live together in Puerto Rico this Wednesday evening. That was 
so cool. So meeting guys around the world is a huge piece of this that I'm proud of. And that's part of, uh, should be part of your nuts, really. Your non-negotiables is to have great guy friends all around the world to support you. And you can have that here. So from the book, War King Warrior, Magician Lover, when the warrior energy is connected with the other mature masculine energies, the King Warrior, uh, Magician Lover, the, the, so the other three, masculine energy, something truly splendid emerges. When the warrior is connected with the king, the man accessing these powers is consciously stewarding the realm, his realm, and his decisive actions, clarity of thinking, discipline, and courage are, in fact, creative and generative. The warrior's interface with the magician archetype is what enables a man to achieve such mastery and control over himself and his weapons. It is what allows him to channel and direct power to accomplish his goals. His admixture with the lover energy gives the warrior compassion and a sense of connectedness with all things. The lover is the masculine energy that brings a man back into relatedness with human beings in all their frailty and vulnerability. The lover makes the man under the influence of the warrior compassionate at the same time that he's doing his duty. And alliance with the lover provides other humane influences in the warrior energy. Marcus Aurelius was a philosopher. Winston Churchill was a painter. The Japanese artist warrior said Mishima was a poet. Even General Patton was a poet. He recited one of his eulogies to General Bradbury at the site of the ancient North African battlefield upon which 2,000 years earlier, Romans had defeated the Carth Carthaginians. <laughs> Carthaginians. Carthaginians. Patton claimed, <laughs> Patton claimed in his mystical poem that he had been there then and had taken part in the battle. When, however, the warrior is operating on his own, unrelated to the other archetypes, the results for the mortal man accessing when the positive warrior, the warrior in his fullness, can be disastrous without the other archetypes. It can be disastrous for the warrior. As we've said, the warrior in his pure form is emotionally detached in his transpersonal loyalty, radically uh, relativizes the importance of a man's human relationships. This is apparent in the warrior's attitude towards sex. Women for the warrior are not for relating to for being intimate with, they are for fun. We've all heard the marching chant, this is my rifle and this is my gun, this is for fighting and this is for fun. So I wanted to, I wanted to ask Bradbury about this actually, right? So you've studied a lot of King War Magician Lover energies. Bradbury is one of our coaches along with Andy Malloy and Rob Piotrowski that uh, host this show in the last week of the month when we're traveling, when we're writing our books and we're doing uh, YouTube ad campaign work, all the other stuff they help us cover and they're phenomenal coaches in our groups and with other guys one-on-one. -on -one. Cynthia and I are the master coaches and they help us. So Jason, I want to ask you about this. When he says, you know, the warrior and for the warrior, women are for fun. This is apparent in the warrior's attitude towards sex for women are not for relating to, but for, for being intimate with, they're for fun. What are your thoughts there? So, you know, a man's lacking if he's just in his warrior without the other three archetypes is what this passage is saying. Yeah, come on in. Uh, well, I think it's important just to note that these, these archetypes in their pure form, um, none of them are going to be particularly um, particularly grand on their own. <laughs> Um, you know, I mean, a king is going to seem aloof and not being able to connect with, with people. The warrior is not going to care anything except for about his, his what's what's right ahead of him. Um, the lover is not going to be able to is is not going to be able to build a kingdom, build it, you know, to have any resources whatsoever because he's always just going to be enjoying what's what's there. Um, you know, the the. the the magician is, is going to be so preoccupied. He's not going to, you know, um, so the mixture between all these is, is what you're, what you're looking for, what you're ideally looking for is your mixture. Um, how, you, how your energy and, and what feels right for you. Um, I'm going to be very heavily lover. I mean, that's just the way I'm built. Right. Um, that's what, that's the energy that feels natural and powerful for me. 
And if I forget the warrior, if I forget the king, if I forget the magician, I'm not living in my true energy because I'm blocking some of those parts of me off. Um, and I, I think that's immediately where my brain's going right now is, is that you got to have both. The warrior and a lover could be intensely awesome. And it is, it is one of those, it is one of those, uh, it, it is one of those, 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 those modalities in sexual interaction where, where, um, you really express a dominance, right? Not necessarily domineering. That would be a dark side, but dominance, um, in, in, in the sexual act, the sexual relationship, and it can be really, really hot. So Jason, let me, let me ask you in, in the theme of warrior, right? That and and anger, which has been our subtitle this week of uh, how to deal with anger as a warrior. You've talked about going into the woods and screaming it out. I've got a client that's talked about that, wanting to go into the woods and feels like he needs to, you know, let it loose or attack a tree or cut down a tree or something like that. Uh, what would you say around a man who might be real angry right now and wanting to process that in, in a good way, but still be connected to the lover, like you just said? So, I mean, my experience with that, um, 20 years of not, not feeling allowed to be angry, Mr. Nice Guy for 20 years in marriage, not feeling like I, I could express that. I, I, uh, I did, I, I went up into the mountains, um, had some men supervise me to make sure I didn't get myself too hurt, um, and expressed everything that I could express. What, what, what I did in that moment was found out where my limit was, found out how dangerous I really was because I was scared to express it. I mean, when I was married to um, that woman, there were times where I would have dreams and thoughts of hurting her badly, you know, um, and it, none of them I would have done, but I was still, it was still scared. I mean, it's, it's a scary feeling. And I think a lot of us have that. I mean, we all have memories of hurting other kids, especially our, during our teenage years when, you know, hurting, hurting cousins and something when we didn't mean to just, we're a lot stronger than we, we realize sometimes. Um, so what I did was I found out where my, where, where my strength lied, how 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 powerful that was um it's not necessary it was necessary for me i think um and if, if anybody wants to talk, talk about doing something like that i I'm, I'm open to 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 doing something like that with them um however what where i found was where my limit was how dangerous would i be and i'd be pretty damn dangerous in that there's also a comfort knowing what that feels like you know where is the line where you go from anger to rage, where you can't think anymore, you know, yeah. and learn to catch yourself before that, learn to go get curious with yourself, feel your body, feel what's going like. And I, after that, I knew that I would never hurt anybody that way because I knew exactly where that line was. Yeah. So uh, I understand what you're saying. And I'm, my next thought is, well, how can a man bring that into his, let's say month to month practice or what could be a first step? Um, would, you know, David data would say, put a tent in your backyard and don't bring any magazines and leave your phone inside and go sit in a tent in your backyard for a full weekend or something like this. What, you know, what can a, what can a guy do like this weekend by himself to just open that door and knock on that door? Um, I, it's, <laughs> so my next re my, my response to you that I was forming in my head, you know, and was to find a cave somewhere that you could be alone. <laughs> and, yeah. As David Data would say, yeah. um, I honestly think that's it's not a, it's not a bad thing. I think this is a, a very healthy thing to express it. Um, you know, if if you like I said, if you if you have some buddies that can be around you for a while, you know, they're sitting back at the campfire where you go out in the pasture and scream and yell and shout at the moon um, and just let all the anger flow. Um, you, you know that that may be a, that may be a really healthy thing. Like I said, the, the purpose is to find out where that line between anger and rage is. Um, and uh, 
sitting in silence and letting your rage go. Yeah, let me silence. actually let me ask you about the next step as well. So, I mean, you teach this, you do this, right? Like you said, if guys want to reach out to you, totally cool. We do different things at our men's retreats as well. I mean, I've chopped down a tree with a chainsaw with Steve Horseman in this kind of way. I've literally laid I've I've laid at we had one thing up at his ranch where we laid in a dugout grave that he had dug a grave for his dog that then recovered. So we had like backhoed out this four foot deep grave that we laid in and then said things we appreciated about each other at the end of a three day weekend. And, you know, so like there's different things that you can do that don't have to be necessarily like ayahuasca level, right? There's, <laughs> there's, there's many steps in between, but let me ask you a little bit different question. So what I just force saw is a man like open or scream. And then, well, that it's like, then what we don't want the volcano to be charged up then we or we need to know how to what do we do next so what's kind of what do you do during the vulnerability hangover phase as Brene Brown would say or how do you keep how do you then escalate into a positive way on going for your life what would you say to that um so I believe this um pretty wholeheartedly and, and it doesn't have to be anything woo woo or anything like this um because my development definitely was not woo woo and i'm really okay with woo woo um men do really really well spiritually with um uh ritual they they do really really well um, with something planned that is designed to get your brain from here to here, right? And so uh, one of my teachers, Christopher Signata, when, when we were doing this, he, he, I expressed my anger. I got it out. I found out where that line was. And then my daily practice in the morning was to get furious, to get angry, and keep my body as still as possible until 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 in the morning I could experience rage and sit with it. The, it was not easy. <laughs> this is the hardest work that I've probably done in this. Um, but like I said, I had 20 years of wanting to hit things, you know, just built up. And so the amount of rage in my body was pretty high. Um, that was my ritual every morning. It was like a morning prayer. It was like, you know, my morning Psalms. It was, it was the, the liturgy, liturgy of the hours for me. It was ritual. It was something I did because I knew that it was going to get me to where I wanted to be, which was a man that could feel everything and be okay with it. And I knew being around women when I could do that, I was attractive and I had fun and I wanted more of that in life. So that's, that's why I went that direction with, with myself. Wow. That's like, that sounds super cool. We talked, I love what you said, ritual. I, I threw my hand up to Cynthia. We talk about ritual all the time. Cynthia loves ritual, whether it's with, you know, your own self within your relationship in life, chapter to chapter in life of delineating time. What else would you add to that? So let me ask specifically. So, you know, a man, and I want to ask Leandro, if you can come in here in a second, how this is hitting you, buddy. I get, I can see, I appreciate you keeping your camera on. Good to see you on here today. What does it feel like to be around men who appreciate ritual? And, and I'm saying this as, so say there's a man watching this that doesn't really know what that means or hasn't started practicing much of this yet, right? And why should he care about that? Why does his woman potentially, why would that be helpful in their lives potentially and in his life, what would you say? Well, I think there's, um, so what Jason just modeled for me is he was talking about, you know, having a ritual around experiencing anger. And, uh, you know, I think women have to breathe in deep when the masculine is in a place of anger, uh, because that's a, a powerful energy that you have that no matter how much she pulls out her own collie, she can't ever quite match um, the firepower that you have. So what I experience when a man's talking about that he has ritual practice around sitting in certain emotions or having a certain kind of breath work that kind of pushes to his edge that has him build 
muscle within his just raw power that he's born with, I feel like my whole body just go, this is a really good place to be. I feel very safe in my feminine body. And I, there's this great amount of honor and reverence for the masculine who is going out into the woods and practicing or has a daily practice um, because it's an understanding of how powerful you are and that you're taking that warrior and you're using action to harness your power for amazing things, phenomenal things, loving things, uh, to make your way in the world and to provide path and structure for those that you love and, and those you uh, take care of. Yeah. Beautiful. So Leander, let me ask you to come in. Do you have a ritual? How is this hitting you? What are your thoughts right now? It's good to see you. Yeah. Come, yeah. Go Hello. For Hello. Yes. Well, um, I'm trying to make some meditation in the morning. This I start doing that, and I would like to have a, a ritual of, of the thing about me and try to relax my thought. And well, I am starting, and I try, I try to do as much as I can. But well, um, other thing that I have, I have started is doing uh, CrossFit. You know which for me is fantastic because it's a <laughs> it's something incredible the, the the energy i can spend and, and how feel after doing that and sometimes well one day <laughs> I, I i have to tell that i feel something like orgasm <laughs> nice i like yeah. this crossfit class <laughs> yeah but but for me it was really incredible to to think that this is similar that way <laughs> yeah that, i know what you mean i try i started crossfit about two months ago and i feel the same way and um, that's the first time that i felt that that sensation doing the, the other exercise so nice that makes me clear that i'm happy with that and i i will i will now have a, um, a problem with the knee and today i will mm. i i would I will not go because that problem, but I think uh, next week I, I will continue to go. And I'm trying to, I'm doing things well <laughs> as I can. Fantastic. Thank Fantastic. You. Do you have a, do you have a question in your own life right now? Do you have a challenge in your life that you want to put on the table for us right now? I have so many questions. <laughs> 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 I have so many doubts. <laughs> um, well, um, I saw my relation, um, I, don't, I don't know how, because my, 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 my wife, I, I, I see her the same, in the same way, in the same position, far from me. And, but I, I realized that is what it is. And is, I'm not, I'm not going to train to, to try to change her. I, I, I think I will change myself. I will work with myself. And, and my, my question is, mm, I have, have I to, to think in that uh, she will change or, or leave it or, you know, I'm not sure um, that the, 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 the work that I, I will do with myself will change her. I'm, I'm not sure that that will work, but, Anyway, I think it's okay what it is, and and <laughs> I don't know. That's my I'm, this is my thought that I have. Yeah. So you're, if I may, so you're wondering if this work, this work on yourself, is going to help the relationship, or that she'll want to change. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. At the end, I think. I would like to rescue my my marriage, but um, I am I am realized that 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 will not happen easily. Or I don't know, but I I, I see very very far. I now I um, I am looking the ten days uh, solve cause of divorce fair that you have in there, and I try to I will I will I will do that. Uh, 
that well that uh, MP3s. But I, I will start to do that. But um, I'm not sure how to think about all the things. Um, I I still like living with my wife and. The day a day is hard because, yeah, you're in a you're in a very difficult spot. It feels like walking through a swamp some days, where your your legs are like tree trunks. And I, I felt like I was in free fall at that time that you're in now. You're not sure which way is up. You're not which, sure which way to go. It sounds like well, you, you know, you're in the right place here. This is the first right step. I know. I think you're talking with Ian or Andy. Is that right too? Or Andy? Yeah. 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 I talk with Andy and, and Ian is living near to me. Mm. And I next week we will talk because well and I keep talking with, with them and I'm happy with that. I they are helping me and I will I will connect here as much as I can here in your in your C notes, but you know, some work. <laughs> yeah, well fantastic to see you. Um uh, so, I mean, I think the, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the question is a big question, right? And so there's, there's two ways I can answer this. One way is this will be good for you, for your children, for the potential of the next version of your marriage. Without a doubt, I can promise that this will help you with your confidence, with your sexual attraction, with your mojo, with knowing which way you're going day to day and week to week and month to month. That's a hundred percent the case with every man. I saw you just breathe. That's fantastic. Right. That the morning routines and these things, it's like adding one brick after another to build up the foundation of yourself. I can promise you that to your question, to your point is no one can ever promise if that means that you'll have the marriage with this one woman that you have the dream of. Right. So you can want something, but that doesn't mean that we're entitled to it. Of course, you know, have you read no more Mr. Nice guy, Leandro? Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I wrote, so that's the, that's it. the first book, right. That we all, most of us, the first book. Yeah. And it's like the blinders come off of my, I mean, my nice guy stuff was, I thought if I was perfect, that I would have a perfect <laughs> life. Right. If I thought yeah. I made all the right choices that I'd have a perfect life. Well, that's not how it works. And that's the first time. That's the first pulling back of the curtain. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and you're doing the, you're doing the daily work. You're doing the right stuff. It's one foot after another. There's a lot of phases to this work. Yeah. Yeah. I think that will be a long, a long way. Um, uh, well, step by step, but, uh, it's difficult. The horn in the, you know, the thought that <laughs> right, as we sure. thought, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're in you're in good company. You're in you're in the right place. Thanks for being here, man. Good to yeah, see you. Yeah. I thank you. Thank you for for helping me. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks for being here. I'm going to share thank you later on. I'm going to press pause on you. I'm going to share 60 seconds this uh, stoic philosophy focus your mind. This is from the YouTube channel Like Stories of Old. Here we go about 60 seconds right now. Some things are up to us and some are not up to us. Epictetus wrote we have no real control over what happens to our bodies, our possessions, our reputations, all the things that can be damaged, altered, taken away from us, against our will. And yet we stress over them as if we have. What we can control, however, at all times, are our judgments, our attitude, and our efforts. So whenever frustration arises, be sure to look at yourself first, Focus your mind. Don't waste time and energy stressing over what you cannot control. And instead, remind yourself of what you can. I think that plays in perfectly well. Remind yourself of what you can control. I have a few paragraphs from Mark Manson's book, Models. If you don't know Mark Manson, this is his first uh, book. He self-published it before Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. So here's a couple of curated paragraphs I pulled for us. The only important skill is learning how to stop buying into your own bullshit, to stop believing your own false stories. I added the word false, your own stories. The resistance is constant. You must constantly fight against the resistance. Acknowledge the stories you create for yourself. 
look them in the eye and say, you know what? I don't care if she's on her phone and her ass <laughs> and her ass says pink on it. I want to meet her <laughs> and then do it <laughs> without hesitation, <laughs> without hesitation, without fear and without apology. Sure. You'll have to flex your mental and emotional muscles and build up your body of self-awareness. But here's the good news. Those are the muscles chicks actually dig. Unfortunately, we all buy into our own bullshit. We all believe our own stories from time to time. And chances are the more anxiety and fear you have surrounding women and your sexuality, the more of your own stories and bullshit you've bought into. So the, this is sort of the obstacle is the way. John Wineland, we're in one of John Wineland's groups right now. And uh, it's self-study, it's embodiment, it's morning practices, it's small groups, it's all of that stuff. You know, we're doing these things for ourselves and on top and for our learning and to bring those learnings to you here. We've been in private practice for, you know, years and years. So we're constantly learning and bringing things here. And the, the obstacle, the, when you hit the shit, if you're, if you're good with the breathing practice, you're good with the, the physical exercise, but like me, when you get to the journaling or the writing, you feel resistance for some reason, right? I can sit down and it, I can write for two or three minutes in the morning. And then after that, it's tough, unless I'm flying on an airplane or I'm in an airport, like Patrick said, get out of the house. But my point is where you hit your resistance, you know, what are the top five things that you need to be doing? Which one of those is the toughest for you? John Wineland would say that's where your resistance is. And it's okay. It's normal. And that's what Mark Manson's saying. And there's a lot of things we talk about. That's when you're hitting your self-defeating prophecy, right? That's when you're hitting uh, your own shit, your own bullshit stories, as Mark Manson would say, right? And that's one reason that you're here. Like, like me, I couldn't see the back of my own head either, right? We can't see our own blind spot. So I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy that you guys are the, the Spartan next to me in this journey as well. So for sake of time, let's jump over to Cynthia's sexcapade spot today. Here we go. Bradbury's laser unicorn lasers from the forehead unicorns. So the sexcapade spot today, when to push her tush in the moonlight, <laughs> yes. in the moonlight, the moon in the moonlight, Cynthia. Yeah, please. What would you like to know about pushing her tush? Well, we were just like us <laughs> talking about um, pushing energy because you're we talking about resistance. Well, this is the fun kind of pushing. Uh, yesterday we talked about, how exquisite it is for a woman for you to touch her her inside regions the inside of her ankles the inside of her wrists and then also giving a lot of strong input to those parts of her body where there's a lot of muscles coming together and that can give her a lot of relief and one of those places happens to be her most beautiful and wonderful of ass and when you're like really massaging into the muscles of her glutes you're really re not only relaxing a whole bunch of muscles there but you're igniting and activating her turn on the stars lighting up in her body all over her body. Now, a lot of times we think about doing these things as foreplay of warming her up and then to have sex. And today I want to offer to bring some of these things in while you are inside of her, while you are between her legs, and that massaging her butt, massaging her glutes while you're inside her, while she's on top of you, is just going to take what's already opening her to the nth degree and making her feel like her whole body is not only responding to you, but she can truly be in her feminine, which is wanting to like open and be bigger than herself and be in the room with you responding to all the energy around her all the input with all the pleasure that she feels 
So to get a little bit more logical of how you can do this and how you can bring her her tush, her ass into this play, um, you can squeeze her. A good old ass grab can have a lot of sexual power. And uh, it's wonderful to grab her cheeks even while you're thrusting into her. That for a woman, if you're really holding on to her hips or her ass, can feel like you're containing her, uh, giving her the way to lean against your energy so that she can open her muscles to you even more. Um, you can amp up this feeling in her even more by rubbing your fingers along the cleft near her anus, which is especially sensitive. And the reason for that is that the nerves in the cleft are connected to the genitals, which makes them extremely erotic. And yesterday I talked about the stars feeling. When you are getting all these nerves connected, she gets to have stars uh, in her anus, in her clitoris, uh, all through her pelvic region. And then this next part, uh, Jason Bradbury had mentioned uh, the strategy of when she's about to orgasm, actually spreading her butt cheeks. And so since the butt crack nerves signal the genitals, um, pulling her cheeks apart can feel really satisfying. And at the same time, you can also try pushing them together, which can be really stimulating. And just having fun with the woman that you're with of, whether it's opening or closing her. And again, this is fun for foreplay, but it also can open her more to you, uh, surrender more to you, be in her own feminine pleasure with you when you bring some of these in during the actual act of sex with her. I'm not sure where to go. I'm not sure where to go from there. So I like the idea of playing more with her butt cheeks. And I also want to say, that that is not the same picture. Oh, there she goes. Is that the same woman? She has a shawl in this one. And <laughs> well, she's no longer in the moonlight. This is the different picture. The, that's yeah. the moonlight. This is twilight. This, Twi is <laughs> <laughs> this is, and there is a pole right there. It does look like a pole. Yeah. <laughs> it does look like a pole. It looks like there's a pole right there that she's about to dance around. Uh, Phenomenal. I, I'm, I'm honestly not sure where to go from there. Right. So, so what where, would you, yeah, where to would go you from add? here is yeah. like, again, you know, we have, have all these fun things to do during sex. And then there's the question of, well, what if I'm not there with my partner? What if she's running, you know, 10 miles away from me and I can't even feel like I can get close into her space. It's the practice of the small things every day, the small touches that you can share, the practices, and it's not just a, you know, today we just briefly squeezed hands. It's not just a, and eventually that will lead to sex. It's kind of in the creative mind. How can some of these things we enjoy now that are good now, that have meaning and purpose now, actually become a part of our love making that I'm envisioning for us to share because that's how sex has longevity in relationship when it's not just of course penis and vagina but there's there's being inside of her and squeezing her hand in that moment of um, connectivity that's beautiful that that's beautiful and I, that makes me think our thoughts drive our actions, it drives our reality, our thoughts that we choose to put into our mind. You could look at that as a spiritual type of idea. You know, you can't prove that, but tends to help out if you put positive thoughts about her in your mind, positive thoughts about if you're just at the spot of squeezing your hand, going for a walk, looking at the stars together, having coffee together on a Sunday morning. You can shit on that or you can feel good about that place that you're in. And uh what thoughts you choose to put in your mind dramatically help her feel connected to you emotionally while you're trying, you know, pulling her ass cheeks apart and smashing <laughs> her ass cheeks together, which sounds like a phenomenal idea to me. So I like this. I like where this is While going. having coffee. <laughs> while having coffee or licking ice cream off of various parts of 
things. Fantastic. Jim, let's honor their, what are they celebrating today? Cynthia, please, if you read the chat, I appreciate yeah, it. Jason Bradbury had said vaccine one today, looking forward to dancing here soon, clothed and otherwise. <laughs> in the moonlight, in the moonlight. <laughs> Uh, Randy said, I have both have had both COVID shots. Uh, and on the 20th of April, I'll, I will be good to travel. Nice. Oh, that's amazing. Bernard said, my thyroid levels are normal. Again, this took me a long time to figure out. Now I have more energy, a better mood, clear mind, and nice. my skin is improving. Congratulations, man. Fantastic. Good. Richard said, PR also finding more peace with myself. Nice. And Jason had followed up saying how we, uh, relationship, how we relate to one another. If one changes, the other has to as well or leave. The discipline a man can bring to this work can be perfect catalyst for change. Absolutely. <laughs> and then there's some advice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Jason Barr said just back from vaccine one, two. Let's get back to Yeah, normal. let's get back to normal. Fantastic. Have a fantastic Friday or Saturday, wherever you are in the world. Happy to see you guys. Patrick, thanks for jumping in again today. Bradbury, love you as always. Leandro, good to see you. Ian Hussain, Dave, Bernard, Richard Jordan, Randy, Andy, Mr. Nix, JT, and J-Bar. Fantastic. Have a good weekend, gentlemen. Ciao, guys. Get more affection, love, and sex in your marriage. Get less paralyzing fear and rejection. Never miss an episode. Watch anytime, anywhere, 3 a.m. on the toilet. Get full episodes. GreatMenMoveMountains.com forward slash VIP. The C-Note Show.